the trading steps for beginners. Let's go step by step on things that I wish I had known 28 years ago when I started. What would I tell my son now if he starts in trading and investing in the stock market? Let's go. Let's go deep. So let's go. Those are only 10 steps, everybody. But those I wish someone would have shared with me those steps when I started, even as an intermediary trader or an advanced trader. There's always something that we can pick up. Number one, life expectancy. If you want to survive as a trader, you need to understand and manage and control your life expectancy. What is your life expectancy in trading? Every day you track the numbers of trades that you do, right? And you track also the winning trades that you have or your percentage win, right? Versus your losing trade, the number of trades that you lose versus the percentage win. And also you look at your average win versus your average losses. Because you can have a successful ratio of, let's say, 75% win ratio versus 25% lose ratio, but still come up negative at the end of the day if your average win is less than your average losses, right? So you got to be monitoring with a spreadsheet every day. What's the number of trades that I took? How many winners? How many losers? What's the average percentage win? What's the average winners? Minus your average loss times your loss percentage, that's going to be your life expectancy. The more you can improve those metrics, the more you'll stay in the game. And I wish someone would have told me about those metrics because a lot of traders, and I've seen it over the years, helping traders now for over 10 years, guys, doing research and, and analysis for institutions and retail traders. A lot of traders are coming in the morning. They are prepared. They do their pre-market analysis. They have great tools. They, they, but they don't understand the money management at a very, very deep level in terms of sizing properly, in terms of understanding on how to track and increase their metric. If you increase here your average win in dollars percentage by 33% and you increase your average percentage win by 33%, right? Right there, you are going to improve your entire trading you know, by 66%. Right. So all those metrics are critical. Number two, read the charts, read the charts, be passionate about charts. I, I meet a lot of traders, you know, come in the morning. It's like a chase game. Be interested. Is the market making higher highs, higher lows? Is the market going sideways? What's the weekly charts and the monthly charts telling you at a very high level versus looking at a very micro minute level? on the two minute chart, one minute chart, five minute charts, tick chart, second chart. Number three, if you can find good indicators that can give you an edge in the market, it's not easy because a lot of those indicators repent. They are not based on real money trading. The people who create those indicators have not traded with live account, real account and live experience. They run those into a trading journal like Trader's Edge. They do 100 occurrences and they tell you they spit how many times you would have won and lost. But in real trading, it does not happen like this. A lot of those indicators repent, meaning that if you look at the up arrow, down arrow, they come at the end of the move. you got to be very careful of those indicators that repent and have no life, real account, real money experiences on the line. Number four, understand the right strategy. Are you going to come in the morning trading stocks? options or futures. What are you most comfortable doing, right? Now we have our stocks at 0% commissions. There's no commissions on stocks. So it's a great age if you have a lot, a lot of money that you can trade stocks with no commissions. Your cost, literally the biggest cost of any business trading is commissions. And on the stock level, it has been reduced to zero. There has never been a better time, guys, to day trade stocks. But now you have to understand what are, you, what are you more comfortable? If you have a small account, you might have to and be pushed and obliged to trade micro, the MES futures or options on the SPY. What are you going after and be good? Be focused on one thing and one thing only and, and improve yourself. It's like going at the gym. You bench press 175, then 185, then 195, and you go to 225 bench press. Take the time 
to build up your stamina emotionally guys and financially understand number one which everything is connected to size are you taking too much size for your account usually traders do not risk on day trades more than one or two percent of the day trading account if your day trading account is ten thousand dollars most traders will not lose more than two hundred dollars per trade so do your risk in accordance to that do your size in accordance to that put the amount at risk the two hundred dollars divided by your stop loss usually you come up with the maximum size that you should be risking on any trade number six what durations are you going to take what assets are you going to do are you going to day trade are you more comfortable to be a swing trader looking at daily weekly monthly charts are you more of a trader you have high impulse trading you are good at you are fast you are good then usually me i was more into the day trading when i was 20 22 when i started now i'm 50 guys 50 years old so my reflexes are not as fast so if i know that i'm not going to day trade more than four to six trades per day because after that i know i over trade and usually there's no more than one or two trends per day that is good to catch so if you do push more than six trades on two trends that means you are looking at three trades per trend it's too much already so ideally the less the better the less you trade the less mistakes you'll make the more you'll be looking for those entry points for looking for good trades and good trades only number seven are you going to use a margin account because all those guys who are on margins who got caught up on swing tradings that were bad trades are getting killed everybody so it never fails the best traders are all the leverage when they blow up. We have long-term capital management. In 1998, Nobel Prize got blown up because they were over leverage. Over leverage is always bringing disaster in size, in margin requirements. If you don't fully understand that, this is where number one comes back in to stay in the game as long as possible for the long term, guys. You are there for the long term. You don't want to make $40,000 in one day and then progressively over the next three months, you lose 100000 Because emotionally and financially, I'm telling you, it's not fun. I've been there and done that. This is not the way to be a professional trader. You want to strive for consistency of life expectancy. Number eight, always look for tax efficiency. Remember, everything that you hold more than one year, when you do your swing trading or long-term investing is long-term capital gain. It's taxed at a much better level than short-term capital gain, which is taxed at ordinary income, especially in the US that can go up to 37 to 39% versus the capital tax gain that can go from 51, 15% to 20, 21%. It's a huge difference. It's almost half guys. So keep in mind taxes. Number nine, become successful when you become successful start having in place structures llc revocable trust you know money that you put in your 401k and your retirement accounts guys your retirement accounts especially your 401k or your defined benefit plans if you're an entrepreneur they are erisa protected meaning your federal protection on your retirement plan if someone sues you they cannot have access to your retirement plan and if you have IRAs, they are state specific that you need to look if you have any protections on your retirement account and your IRAs. There's also life insurance and annuities. Your cash value is protected on some states. So you've got to learn and become more savvy in asset protections, tax efficiency as you become a better trader, a better investor. And most importantly, guys, number 10, got to understand market cycle. I have, it took me a long time to understand that all the wealth guys in the world is being done during the market cycle, the downturn. It does not matter, fail. We went up, we went up, we went up in 2007, boom, we crashed. 2007, 2009, right? Boom, we start crashing. Here, you buy at the bottom, 2010, something like that, right? This is the people who buy assets here that provide income long-term investing stock with dividends tech stocks all those stocks over the pre next 10 12 years after that they went three times 10 times the money 
right? So you got to be good at timing market cycle in real estate and buying selling companies, which are assets that provide you income and as well as timing the market. One to nine are going to be very difficult and worthless. This is why 90% to 70% of the trader lose money. You know, it's because it's day trading and trading is very, very hard. Mentally, what people don't understand is, in my opinion, learning how to read charts, using in the good indicators are the easy part. Strategy is a little more complex, like some options. Strategies or your life expectancy and your money management is a little bit more complex because people don't pay attention to it. But the most important part that nobody drill, <clears throat> especially with YouTubers that consistently talk to you about wealth and stuff like this, it's your mind, guys. Your mind, your biggest enemy in wealth accumulation and especially in trading because you have more numbers of mistakes that you can do. You know, if you're an investor, you might do one decision a month, one decision every two months, one decision every three months, one decision every four months, which is three decisions per year. When you are a day trader, you are, it's like playing chess all day long. It's very intense. And by the way, if you want to be a good trader, try to trade in the morning. This is where there's the most volume, the most open interest, the institutions and the professional trader push that tantrum from 7 a.m. to about 11 a.m. You will notice over time, over a thousand occurrences, the 11 a.m. to 3.30, 3.45 p.m. is crap. It's always the time where traders give back their money. And you give back your money because you keep on trading so you are not able to shut down your computer, step away from the machine, right? Go for a walk, go play tennis, go at the gym, go enjoy your life, go do something else. Even be passionate in another business. The best you can do is trade 7 a.m., 11 a.m., done for the rest of your life. And I'm telling you, those are the hot, productive, efficient hours of the market, right? For traders. And in those hours, you don't trade more than four to six round trip and you discipline yourself to get out of the computer. All of this is mine. Remember, I discussed in other videos that you can lock on money management. Make sure you don't lose more than three to five hundred dollars per day, depending on your account. Set up some platforms now are becoming better, better when you can set up your daily loss limit your uh, drone, your max drawdown. So if you start with, uh, let's say, a $10,000 account and you say, I want a 15% max drawdown at $8,500, boom, if they will shut you down, you will not be able to place a trade. And that's a good thing for you. It protects your own money. If you trade for a prop firm or a funded account or an hedge fund, if you do not respect the rules that they give you, the max drawdown, the daily limit loss, Bang, sayonara, hasta la vista. They will fire you. And I know because I was a former pro firm, I worked for an hedge fund, JP Capital, and I tell you, if you do not respect their rules, they will get you out. So I hope those rules are helpful. Guys, there are no BS ways of looking at the market stuff that I wish someone would have told me, or I wish those are the rules I would pass to my kids. Hopefully they help you. Take care, everybody.